Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hi, guys. We are live and in person. We are live. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, welcome, everybody. We got that going. Let's turn this down. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. See, we got our live pe people here, so we'll get on so I can see you. That's right. I'm Gary. I'm Lisa. And our top story today is where is the market headed? Yes, we've had a lot of headlines, of course, a lot of crazy headlines this week. Um, but the number one headline that really affects us, besides the main one but right now, Russia and Ukraine, um, and the issues it's having there is inflation. Oh my gosh, it is huge. It, it's the highest it's been in 40 years. <laughs> if you drive a car, you know exactly what we're talking about every time you stop to get gas. Well, the car, the grocery store, supply chain, everything. Try and buy a car. Try and fill a car with gas. <laughs> Try and remodel a house. That's right. Supply chain issues across the board, every industry, definitely in the real estate industry. Yeah, we heard this morning on a call we, uh, we were on with a national uh, lender that a, a house that the, there's builders, of course, you know, the building builders have not built enough homes in the last, you know, 50 years. Everyone kept talking about when are the millennials going to buy a house? When are the millennials going to buy a house? Boom, they came to the market all at once. No houses to buy. <laughs> right. They said that normally it would take about two months for a builder in North, Carol uh, North Carolina to build a home. And now it's taking, what do you say, 13 months? Uh -huh. So that's the issue with even trying to get new product online. So a big difference between two months and 13 months. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about houses that were torn down and a new house was built there. And I say that because, you know, the fires we had just a few years ago, they burnt down, they built new houses there, but that didn't add any supply to the market. Right. So they're talking about how, you know, a lot of big homes and, and small homes, they get scraped and they're counting them as a new build, but it's not really a new build. It's net zero because they tore down a single family home and built a single family home. Well, that didn't gain us a home in the market. <laughs> <laughs> and we need millions of homes in the market. So we've got to take undeveloped land and develop it in the right place at the right time to get people housing. Housing is a problem. Right. Definitely a supply issue. Things are selling right away. Um, definitely a seller's market around here and nationally, just based on all the agents and the people that, that we talk to. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and talking about where to move and where they're going to move, coming and going. And oh my goodness, the conversations um, all over the map. That's right. They have run out of real estate. No matter where you're going, they're running out of real estate. Mm -hmm. So what I thought we would do today is I would ask three questions. These aren't random questions. Lisa actually made me write them down and she got to look at them. But uh -huh. question number one, where is the market headed? Where what, do you think it's headed, Lisa? I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think we're going to get more of the same. We're just talking about supply chain issues. We're talking about, uh, you know, that they're not developing houses fast enough. And sellers aren't selling because they've got nowhere to move. And buyers are st stacking up, ready to buy the house. But if the sellers don't have any place to move to, then we're just going to be repeating it. You know, Groundhog Day. It's just one big circle over and over and over again. What do you think? Yeah, the, the lender today has a national executive in big company was saying that, you know, when it breaks, I think it's going to break open because there's just kind of this pent up demand and the issues with the interest rates, you know, they really haven't moved that much. People are like, oh my gosh, the interest rates moved and the headlines are like, they're crazy, but they're moving up and down like an eighth or a quarter percent. It's not a lot. So the interest rates are still at record low. And then we'll see what happens just with the headlines here um, on the interest rates, but it's still a great time to be a buyer um, in this market. Yeah, you just can't read the headlines and think you, that you're getting the whole article. For that sure. just doesn't happen. You can read the headline, but then if you read the headline, you have to read what's the underlying text on the headline. The underlying text could be totally different than what the headline, because the news is so sensationalized. All they want to do is fear, 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 and fear is not driving the market today. It was in the past. But it's, it's not driving it now. People are making informed decisions. And, you know, as informed as we can, who knows what's going to happen between Russia and Ukraine. I mean, there's a lot of things that we don't know. We may never know. Right. 
Right. The next question is, how long will this market continue? Well, I think it's going to continue at least through the rest of this year. I don't see anything changing than what we're doing. I, the interest rates aren't going to affect the market because, you know, if it goes up, I mean, it's gone up a lot already. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, one basis point is one percentage. So if it was at three percent, it's at four percent. And that's a huge move in any one year span. But even if it goes up another point, you know, you're still not looking at the diminishing return on what's out there. I mean, people that were willing to pay 4% are willing to pay 5%. Now, could it affect the pricing? It could, but guess what? There's no inventory. So how can it affect the price on a house when there's none of your neighbors for sale? It is just an unbelievable time. But it, we just seem to, in the real estate, go from one unbelievable time to the next unbelievable time. And the foreseeable unbelievable time is a crystal ball question. All right. Well, the market's always, it is what it is. And it's really based on supply and demand all the time. That's a normal, you know, just commerce market. And so that's, that's, everyone's always talking about like when it was the short sales or when it was, I mean, the market, the market. Well, now it's the market. It just is what it is. Changes every second. And it is micro, um, uh, sensitive to the micro na uh, neighborhoods. You can't just go statewide or countywide. I mean, everything is right down to the, to the micro level when it comes to real estate. So all these articles that come out that are national articles on real estate, well, I mean, to me, they're not really meaningful because it's such a local uh, product that we're selling. I saw where 90% of the millionaires made today are making it through real estate. I thought they were making it through YouTube. <laughs> 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 but 90% of the people mm -hmm. have made their million or millions through real estate. That's a large percentage of the population that no real estate is a value, especially if you're in inflation and like we are now and things are going up very quickly. Um, you best hedge against inflation, real estate. What do you, how do you see it? Right. Well, I think that the, the hedge against inflation on your, on your real estate is you have a fixed cost. Your housing cost is fixed, even though the value of your home may be going up or the properties may be going up. Everything else is going up, obviously groceries, gas, everything. Um, we just got our insurance renewal and I'm like, wow, I mean, it's crazy how much that's gone up. Um, but it's, it's fix your housing costs. So at least you have one stable cost because you're always paying a mortgage, whether you're paying rent or you're paying a mortgage, you're, you're paying the mortgage. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I have an example where somebody was buying a house for 650,000 in a $450,000 neighborhood, but guess what? The seller was willing to carry the paper and the people who bought that house that was 200,000 underwater when they bought it, they've held it on long enough and now it's no longer underwater. In fact, it's a couple hundred thousand the other way. Mm -hmm. So like we always say, don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna look like a genius, buy something today, wait 20 years and we'll see. Right, right. That's why you know so many people people that are spending over the asking price or, you know, what, whatever that is, I mean, the asking price is an arbitrary price. The price is what the market is willing to pay for it right now. Um, but I, I just don't think looking down the long-term road, it's going to be over the price of anything. No, nope, you're right. And then the, the third question, and this is kind of a blog or video blog kind of deal. We're kind of trying to trying some new things here. What changes, the market we are in. Yeah, I think that, you know, going to war kind of changes the market because everyone gets a little nervous. So I think in the headlines, like we just said, the sensational headlines, you know, one day interest rates are climbing, interest rates are falling. Inter well, what are they? Well, it doesn't really matter until you're signing your loan docs exactly what that number is. <laughs> and they're still at record low. I mean, they've been, you know, 18%, 12% as long as we've been doing this. And it really didn't slow people down you know, on buying real estate. It just costs what it costs. Yeah, the only thing slowing people down today is the lack of inventory. It's not the interest rates that are rising. Mm -hmm. It's not the jobs. People have jobs. It's just, there's nothing to buy. Yeah. So, so what changes the market we're in? I think Lisa's right, you know, war. And 
I think that bottom line is, let's, you know, peel back the layers a little bit. I think it's governments, you know, if they do something, if they make a tax law change or if they, mm -hmm. they change this or let's say interest rate uh, is no longer interest mortgage is no longer deductible on your taxes. I mean, they can change things very rapidly that nobody can see coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things we've seen uh, the effects of already is that Prop 19 that passed here in California, where basically you can't pass down your properties to your children and with the tax benefits of letting the children have the long-term tax base. And we've seen things come on the market here, um, fourplexes, sixplexes, properties like that that have been in families for 50 and 60 years that have to be sold now because of Prop 19. Yeah, they just can't afford to pay the mm -hmm. new generated taxes on the properties. And yep. in fact, the people that are buying them, developers and builders, they're going to tear them down. And where there was eight units, now they're going to put 20 units on there. So it, the density is coming together and it's going to be more and more dense is kind of the way I see it. Is that how you see yeah, it? Yeah, well, that's what the state is trying to, 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 to do with their e edicts and bills and laws they're passing, at least here in California, is trying to get higher density. Uh, just to build new housing. Yeah, we have that law, what is it, the Title Nine or Section mm -hmm. Nine or where you can build a single dwelling unit or we're calling them granny units. An back, ADU, an ADU. additional mm -hmm. dwelling unit or units on your property. But it's getting some pushback in the neighborhoods because the way they said that you could build kind of whatever you want uh, on your lot, build more housing, but there's plenty of neighborhoods that are pushing back on that. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, you know, if you live in a big house in a big neighborhood and it's gated and you have an HOA, supposedly AB9 has cleared the way for you to build a ADU on your property. Well, believe me, the neighbors aren't all happy about that. Right. And they don't want you to build a, you know, a duplex behind your house, behind their gates to where they're all gated. So right. yes, it's, it's caused a lot of turmoil. And it has not, it's just the front end of that, that that's starting. So we'll see what happens there. But um, the market is what it is. It's still a robust seller's market. Um, there would be, there's plenty of buyers in the marketplace. Uh, one of the stats he gave today, the national le uh, lender was that people are in there still. The numbers are the same. People coming in to get pre-approved, but not as many loans are closing just because they don't have a house to buy. But the buyers are in the pipeline. They are pre-approved and ready to go. Um, if you need, uh, want to talk about your situation, you want to sell, but you also need to buy, uh, there's some products. Maybe we can help you out uh, with a bridge loan to figure that out. So you can go ahead and buy in the market and then turn around and sell your home after. Uh, so there's always a way. There's a creative way. We have the way if yep. you have the will. Yep. So we love to talk about real estate. You know where to find us. GaryLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thanks, guys.